The Empress has died. The heir to the Crown Imperius has vanished. As the bloodline dies, so does the Empire of the Dawn. Mutinies have been reported by garrisons on the frontier as the minor houses vie for control of the known universe and everything within it. It is to be civil war. Beyond the lies, the promises, the bloodshed, and the assassin's blades, there will surely be a grand future. One with an Ashnon, or Drakai, or Quell, or Zathmir Noble sitting upon the Dawn Throne. Surely a new empire is to be formed. But first, blood. In Imperius, two to four players will be drafting cards that consist of any number of cards from up to four factions, their own faction, as well as their opponent's factions, as well as event cards that will be used to switch gameplay up and add unknown effects to the game. Players are dealt a hand of five cards each. Players will keep one card from their hand of five, pass the remaining four cards to their left, and repeat that process, selecting a card, passing the remaining cards to their opponent, until they have drafted a hand of four cards. Those cards can be made up of their own faction's cards, opponent's faction cards, as well as event cards. The remaining four cards are then shuffled by the first player and dealt face up one card per planet in the center of the table to kind of seed the planets at the beginning of each round. Players then take turns deploying cards, one card at a time in turn order beginning with the first player, and a card can be deployed to any of the four planets on the table following a couple of rules. No more than five cards can be placed on a planet, and no more than two cards on the planet can be placed face down. This process will continue until all players have deployed all cards from their hand. Beginning with the first planet, or the planet on the left, the face down cards are turned up. Cards are then organized in order of their initiative value. Once cards are revealed and organized in order of initiative, cards are resolved in increasing initiative order, starting with the zero cards and moving down through the highest value on the planet. This can result in assassins killing nobles. It could result in a noble scoring the victory points on a planet, a royal guard protecting a noble, ambassadors and commanders scoring points, as well as elders that have various abilities or could have various abilities in the game as well. We then re resolve the second planet, followed by the third planet, and this will continue until all planets have been resolved. A faction's noble will score the victory points on the planet, unless eliminated by a rival faction's assassin. However, if that faction that controls the noble also has one of their royal guard cards on the same planet, the royal guard can prevent the assassination and allow the noble to score the points. Commanders grant victory points to the strongest faction on the planet and allow them to place a control token on that corresponding planet. Control tokens are used for end of game scoring. Ambassadors score points for their faction if their faction is the favored faction on the planet. The basic elders of each faction add strength and or favor to their faction's strengths or favor on that particular planet, helping the ambassadors and the commander score. Advanced elders can be added to the game that grant additional abilities. Events can also be drafted and played onto planets, and events can allow you to score extra points, place control tokens on planets, examine face-down cards. There's a whole plethora of abilities to really switch up the gameplay. There are four basic planets in the game, each planet being worth a set amount of victory points. These planets do not provide special abilities, only allowing your factions to score points. Advanced planets can also be played in the game, one advanced planet replacing one of the basic planets. Advanced planets still grant victory points, but now include various abilities that can switch up the way cards are played to them, they can switch up what happens for to a, fa a faction that is favored or strongest, and they can also uh, prevent events from happening. So a game of Imperius will last until one player reaches or exceeds 20 points. At that point we enter in-game scoring, where we add points for control markers placed on planets, we deduct points for each player for every casualty that has been taken, and the player with the highest score is crowned the new ruler of the Empire.